Hello everybody. Uh, today I want to try to show you uh, some of the things you can add to the ecosystem within your aquaponics system. Uh, try to build the biodiversity that supports life. Uh, the more things you have in there, the more stable your system will be. Just like in any natural ecosystem, you want to add a food web. So uh, there's a few things I've ordered in the mail over here. I'm going to show you in just a second uh, to add to my system. We'll see if it works out over time. Uh, I'll try to talk to you now about them. All right, folks, I'd like to talk to you today about introducing some more organisms to the ecosystem of your aquaponics system. Um, let's see here, I've been doing a, did some looking around online and I've been thinking about introducing some small crustaceans for quite some time. Uh, I would like to have some crayfish in there eventually to clean up the detrius and all that good stuff in the bottom of the aquaponics system. Uh, aquaponics system, I mean. <laughs> but uh, I found that gamorous shrimp are very tough and very small and they breed prol prolifically underneath the correct conditions so hopefully my system will handle those we'll see if not I'll see if I can make adjustments and try them again in the future but uh, these little guys apparently there's several different a lot of different versions of these small little shrimp like this but when they're full grown they're like a quarter of an inch uh, Let's see if I can show one. There's one right here. You see it moving around? That's about a full grown one, and there's a bunch of little dots that I'll see swimming around in here. And these little guys are a cleanup crew. They'll eat vegetation and like anything. They'll eat stuff off the bottom. They're little scavengers and they breed like crazy. So, And they also happen to be a trout's favorite food, so or one of them, anyways. So uh, there's actually a lot of flies that you can make. There's little ones. There's a little guy right there about three millimeters long. Oh, I guess you can't see it. But anyways, uh, hopefully I can get a population of those built up. Uh, I found a, a place called Nasco's online. I actually saw Gamera shrimp for sale in quite a few places, uh, but this one came in a little bundle with duckweed as well, which as you know, that's a plant. Uh, it's basically nitrogen fixing once it grows and some of the fish eat it. Uh, that's nitrogen that's released back into the system. Uh, so I put these in, I already poured this out straight into my aquaponics system in a lower sump tank there. And these are like this type of duckweed. Apparently there's a lot of different types. This one is like a little tiny speck of a leaf. Like this right here is probably a full growing one, that little green dot right there. So that won't gum up my uh, water pump or anything at all. I wasn't expecting to get this, this plant. This is food and it provide, provided oxygen for the gamma shrimp on the way here. So I may... Put some of that in the bottom of the sump tank. I'll think about that. Definitely not put it in my other tanks because I don't want to uh, clog up the uh, solids lift overflow tube. Actually, I just kicked up some of this shrimp. There's a little guy right there. But uh, when I first got it in the mail, uh, this company was actually kind enough. They called me and said they think it was too hot to ship it. And then I was like, sure, you can wait to ship it. And then I waited like five days and shipped it. And of course, this is a long, heat, long lasting heat wave, like heat index of like 110, 115 a lot. Uh, actual temperatures are like, I don't know, it's 96 to 100 degrees, depending on the day for the last week. Uh, but uh, they actually put my phone number on the box too. So when the, the mail company dropped off the box, they actually texted my cell phone and let me know that, hey, there's, we found, found a shady spot in your front porch there, but they're gonna be in the sun soon. So you better pick these guys up and put them in the house. It says live animals inside. So my wife got home in time to pull them in before they got in the sun and baked, which they were already kind of baking out there. But uh, as soon as I got it, got in the house, I came home that later that day, I cut the top off to get some more air in there. And I actually have been introducing, like yesterday I introduced one cup of aquaponics water. I mixed it a little bit into each one. I actually have snails that came in the bundle. So I've got pond snails, gamma shrimp, and duckweed is what I ordered in the bundle from ASCO. Uh, I'm probably not gonna put the pond snails in there because even though these guys are big and they'll never get in the pump, they're gonna have babies. And the babies are basically the little stones that crawl around all on their own. And even if I put it in one of my other tanks, they're gonna find their way into that sump tank and into the pump. And I am not willing to risk that. 
I'm going to read up on these guys though. You can see if they're native to my area, and if they are, I'll release them back into the wild. But if they're not, then I'll probably set up a fish tank for the kids. Um, let's see here. So uh, that's basically where I'm at right now. Hopefully I'll get a large population of these guys built up and it'll be like another form of fish food for all the animals and, the, and just build an ecosystem and an aquaponics system. Uh, that's the goal here, you know. It's uh, farming with nature. All right, so that's where I'm at. Uh, I'm gonna introduce the, uh, I introduced another couple of aquaponics water today. Uh, I'm trying to get them used to the pH and all the other smells and whatever's in the water so it doesn't shock them so bad. And then I'm gonna start introducing them to the heat and I'll set them out. Like right now they're in the house, so they're 71 degrees, 72 degrees right now. Uh, and once, once I get the uh, aquaponics water level up in here and they've sat in there for a few days, I'll just, I know this is going slower than I need to, but I'm gonna go out there and start setting them out at nighttime in the greenhouse and then uh, for at least a day or two and then uh, put them in a protected shady area outside so they can get used to this heat. I might, I might even bring them back inside at night, we'll see. And then uh, and then I'll release them out there. Uh, my aquaponics water's been like 90, 95 degrees in my little system, so everything's, all the goldfish are doing fine. Uh, everything else seems to be doing all right. Some are my fathead minnows. Also on a side note, saying when I was talking about earlier about this being a, a food that trout loves, it actually is known to cause them to get more color. So, you know, the trout are in the salmon family. And a lot of the stuff that makes salmon meat so dark and rich is gonna be those little bugs that swim around in, the, in all the ocean and stuff that they're, they're munching on. So uh, these little these little guys, I might need, not even need uh, crayfish. Uh, here's where uh, I already released the uh, duckweed out in the actual sump tank. Some place I've put it so far, I'm sure it'll find its way in other places in the system over time. But duckweed is known to self-replicate rapidly. And I haven't fed though. There's a couple of fathead minnows I haven't fed in here since I put them in here. They're thriving, but it's largely because of the mosquito larvae and all that stuff, which is the reason why I'm not feeding them, so they eat that. And the detritus, because fathead minnows are known to eat that too. Uh, but now they got a buffet of yummy duckweed to eat. Uh, so hopefully this stuff will slowly take over, fill up the system. And if I end up not liking it, I can always start scooping it out and feeding it to something. I also heard it's highly prized in some countries as a meal.